Hey beautiful people, what is up and welcome back to my channel. I'm Jamila and I love all things beauty. I love all things makeup, I love all things skincare, and I especially love sharing my tips and tricks for how to find high-end and luxury beauty products at bargain prices. If that sounds like something you're interested in, I would absolutely love if you would consider subscribing and joining the fam. Okay, I have been dying, literally dying to film this because I freaking love rankings. Y'all love when I do rankings too. And I've been wanting to do this for a while. It's just, you know, life has been lifing. So I finally have time. I sat down and I'm going to film. Well, I am filming. I'm going to rank the last 10 eyeshadow palettes that I've tried. So we got other things to do today. I have like two more videos that I need to film. So let's just dive in, shall we? Okay, so coming in at number 10 is going to be... Miss Anastasia. Now this is the, it's not the newest anymore, but this was the newest release from Anastasia, uh, her Nouveau palette. Now, now this is not a bad palette, and honestly all the palettes I'm going to talk about today aren't bad palettes. It's just that I kind of feel like this was a little overhyped. Now this did release in the summertime at a point when ABH hadn't released any palettes in a very, very long time. So I understand the hype, you know, we got a new ABH palette. It was, you know, new packaging, new, um, I don't think the formula was new. Actually, it might be a new formula to be honest. But you know, we had less shades. It was, it was just a different format. So it felt very new and exciting for the brand. But after using this, I was like, okay, it works, the quality is nice, but I didn't think it was anything special. And maybe it's just me. And here's the other thing too, right? A lot of the videos that I watched of creators loving this and really, really enjoying it, they didn't look like me. So I should have known. I should have paused and thought to myself, Jamila sis, you and them don't share the same skin tone. So you might want to reconsider because this what light purple lilac shade is complete ash on me. So I know that's what a lot of people were excited for. And then when you take away the lilac shade, it's honestly a pretty basic palette in my opinion. Um, so having used this a couple of times, it's nice, but I didn't think it was anything special. And quite frankly, there are so many other palettes in my collection that I would reach for over this that it is coming in last place because it was honestly the least exciting palette that I tried out of my pile of 10. The quality isn't bad, it's just <laughs> nothing spectacular. The other thing too that I want to point out is that there is no deepening shade in this palette. This deep brown shade is actually a shimmer, but it doesn't blend out like Patricia's shimmers blend out to be a really nice kind of matte shade. It, it, it do, You still do see the shimmer there. Can it blend out? Yes, but I wish that there was a darker matte in there. These two shades are kind of light to be honest. Honestly, I just wish I had watched some deeper creators use this before I like ran out and bought it. I got caught in the hype. It is what it is. It happens to all of us sometimes. Coming in at number nine is another palette that I got caught in the hype of. And again, good palette. I just, it's all right in my opinion and kind of overpriced. And that is the Patrick Ta Major Dimension 2 palette. Now this is the rose toned version. Now this is gorgeous. I'll give it that to begin with. And all of these mattes are really, really nice. This one is definitely a bit, you know, it is ashy on me, but all of the other mattes perform really well. You do get two cream shades as well that you can use. And then you have the shimmers. Now, some of these are toppers. A lot of these are toppers. And I just felt like it was okay. It's a rose tone Morby palette that had good quality, but it felt overpriced. And even though it's a nice palette, it's not the first rose toned palette that I would reach for. Again, I just got caught in the hype. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like I could see myself decluttering this easily because I didn't think it was anything special. Maybe it's just me. As y'all can see, I have two palettes in the bottom that a lot of people have been loving and yeah, I don't know. I wish I was more articulate, but I'm not doing a very good job. Sorry, maybe I'm rusty at this. <laughs> Anyways, let's keep this moving. Coming in at number seven is the Nomad Cosmetics Hudson Valley Palette. This was gifted to me by the brand, um, and I'm really grateful that they sent it my way. First things first, packaging, 10 out of 10. I love this kind of cardboard, paper-y feeling type of packaging. It's super duper cute. 
This is a very fall appropriate palette, very, very matte heavy. You only get three shimmers out of the 15 shades. And I do think that the three shimmers pair well with both sort of the green side as well as the warm side. And this performs well. I think the mattes in here work really well. I think it's a really pretty um, palette. What I struggled with with this palette is that when I saw it, I really only saw two or three looks. And I know that I have seen a lot of other creators do really interesting things with this palette, but this wasn't a color story that honestly immediately jumped at me. And it wasn't one that really inspired me. I saw a warm look, I saw a green look, and I was like, okay, cute. But I like palettes when I look at them, I'm like, okay, I see four or five different looks, and this didn't, this didn't do that for me. Now I will say that the mattes in here are amazing quality, such good pigment. This red shade is phenomenal. It actually shows up as a red and doesn't turn pink on me, which I really appreciate because it's hard to find a really nice, just sort of true primary red in my opinion. And I think the shimmers in here are okay. Now Nomad is not known for having the sparkly or shiny shimmers. So that is just something to keep in mind if you are getting this palette. Um, but I will say that the mattes here are super nice um, and they work well. So again, coming in at number seven, not a bad palette by any means. It's just not a color story that jumped out to me um, or inspires me that much. Now coming in at number six is a baby quad. This is the Tom Ford Lava Luster Quad. Now I don't know when this came out, but I picked this up during the Beautylish sale. And this is so different from anything Tom Ford has ever released. Now you can already see that the textures are very, very different from previous Tom Ford quads. It's not his wet to dry formula. It's, it's something different and I like it. It's very unique. Now, the reason why this is ranking higher than some of the other palettes, even though it's just like four pans and honestly just four shimmers, is because I think that these are true one and done shadows. I have just used this as like dip my finger in, plop it all over the lid and then gone in with like my bronzer and buffed out the edges and that's a look. And I think that there's a place in my collection and in a lot of folks collections for shadows like this where you don't really need a ton of manipulation, where you don't really need to do a lot, where you can literally just take your finger and just go and you're good to go. So I like that. I also like that these shades are super pigmented and they have a little bit of texture to them. Tom Ford shadows, at least from the ones that I have in my collection, tend to be a little bit smoother, a little bit softer, not super duper pigmented. So this, and it is a new formula to his line, this just felt really special and I appreciated, you know, how simple and easy this was to manipulate. It actually kind of reminds me a lot of the Chanel quad that I have. That's just like really nice sparkly shimmers that I can just plop on the lid in a one and done fashion. Like I would do the same with this that I did that I do with my Chanel. Just take a little bit, plop it on the eyes, maybe do a little bit of bronzer in the crease and you're good to go. So this is definitely an interesting one and I, I really like it. I could see myself traveling with that for work easily because it's a small quad, you have four different shades. They look a little, so some of them look a little similar next to each other, but it's four different shades and you don't need to add a lot of any, a lot of anything extra to make it work, you know? I think I'm already out of order. Did I say that was six? That's palette number seven. <laughs> number six, I have to give to the Nomad Cosmetics. This is the Montverde, Montverde palette. This is the Costa Rica palette. I don't know why I'm trying to speak Spanish. Anyways, this is the Costa Rica palette. Again, this was another one that was gifted to me by the brand. Really like this one, <laughs> like really like this one. And I really like all of these palettes, so it's hard for me to rank all of them right now. But this one has the cutest packaging Nomad has ever done. I love that they kept the that they did these little cutouts and you have the little sloth and everything. I think it's the cutest thing. So, love that. Now, this is a palette that honestly my opinions shifted a little bit. Now, when I first got this and I tried and I opened it up, I squealed like a baby piglet. I was like this is so gorgeous and it really is pretty. If you are someone that loves color, if you love bright vibrant shades, you are going to adore this one. However, the more I played with this and the more I worked with this, 
I started liking it a little bit less and less. And that is because I didn't realize how green heavy this palette was until I started playing in it. Because once you really look at it, you realize that you have one, two, three, four green leaning shimmers. You only really have this purple shimmer here. And even this shimmer on top here is a green to pink multi-chrome. So like when you look at it, all of the shimmers are green with the exception of this purple one, which really kind of forces you to have a green look unless you decide to only play in the matte shades, which is where you get that color and that variation. Like you have these really vibrant pinks and blues and you definitely get a lot of greens. Even when you look at the mattes, you have one, two, three, four green shades. And this one, it looks brown, but honestly, it's a green brown shade. So once you put it on the eyes, you really start to see the green pop out. So after really playing with this palette more, even though I thought that this was really, really colorful, it's honestly really green. <laughs> so if you like green shadows, you're gonna like this one. But if you thought that this had a little bit more color and variety, it is a bit of a shock to the system once you stop playing in it and you realize, wait, nah, every single shimmer is green except for one. So that is just something that, you know, made me drop this a little bit lower on the lid. Now, what I will say, though, is that Nomad did a little something extra and a little something special with these mattes because they are vibrant. They are pigmented. And as far as I know, none of these are pressed to pigments. So if you have sensitivities, you know, you can use this, get real great color payoff. They showed up really well on my skin. I am a medium deep complexion, had no issues with how they paid off. Um, so the mattes here really do stand out and I think are just absolutely stunning. It hurts me to rank this a little bit low, but it's a lot of green, <laughs> even for me. Okay, next we're breaking into the top five and palette number five I have to give to the Melt Amor y Mariposas palette. Now this is just so freaking beautiful. I loved this packaging when I saw it. You know, I love the hummingbirds. I love the monarch butterflies. Everything about this is really, really gorgeous. The palette itself also feels really heavy, really luxurious. It has a lot of weight to it. So it's one of those that I'm like, okay, I see you melt. And it took me like a year before I tried this. I'm, I'm ashamed. Yes, leave me alone. <laughs> now this is a really different palette for melts because they typically don't do the circle pans. These are definitely smaller than standard eyeshadow pans. Um, but overall, this is a gorgeous palette. I think that the mattes in here are stunning. They are pressed pigments. This palette was made in Italy, by the way, if you care. Um, and all the shades here perform really well. I think you can keep it warm. You have some greens, you have purples. I like that it's kind of by row. You have a green row, a sort of neutral row, a more orange row, and then a pink purple row. And I think that all of these shades here mix and match really well. Melt has some amazing mattes and it's no different here. And I think the shimmers in here are super nice as well. Now they definitely don't have the best shine and impact from shimmers. Like Melt isn't my go-to shimmer formula, but it's nice enough. <laughs> and I really enjoyed playing with this. I had a lot of fun with this palette and I really want to reach for this mold because this is definitely a color story that calls to me. And it does, like I look at this and I see a ton of different looks that I can create. So this is my number five. It's stunning. It's gorgeous. I don't know if this is still available, but I think you can get this for $28 with, you know, Melt's discount. So I think for that price, it's a steal. Steal, steal, steal. Coming in at number four is another colorful palette. And I'm just realizing all these colorful palettes are kind of smushed in the same place. <laughs> and that is the Sydney Grace Tropicolor palette. Now this was a collab with uh, the Fancy Face and Sydney Grace. And I do have a review slash face impressions on my channel. And I'll link that below. And any videos I have for any of these palettes will be linked below. So if you want more details, check it out. And this is so beautiful. Now, if you know Tina, you know the fancy face, she is Jamaican. So this was inspired by Caribbean. It was inspired by Jamaica. And I think she did such a great job pulling this together. Now, the reason why this ranks higher than, you know, the Melt palette and especially the Nomad palette is that I do think that there's more variety in here. Where the Nomad palette was a lot of green, I felt like this gave me green, but then I also got blue and I got neutral and I got um, uh, pink, you know? This is definitely more blue heavy than anything else, 
but you even get this really nice multi-chrome here. And something about Sydney Grace's shadow formula is just magic on the lid. Now, the Sydney Grace formula is a little bit heavier than some eyeshadows, which I really started to notice that it does, you know, it's a little bit thicker. <laughs> it's thicker, but the color payoff is so good. And just because it's thicker doesn't mean that it emphasizes texture or anything else. It honestly just creates really nice punch in my opinion. And I just think that this was such a well thought out, beautifully curated palette by Tina that I really appreciate it. And I think these two shades here are so special because they have a little bit of blue and purple in them. This one has a little bit of chunk to it. This one is smoother. You know, it, it's just such a good palette. And I appreciate that she gave us this deep brown shade instead of a deep black because you can use this to deepen up any of the colors here and it does turn everything like a little bit more smoky, you know. It's just it's just so well done, so beautiful. And every shade that she picked out is so like thoughtfully put, put together. I definitely encourage you to watch her video on this because she talks about what inspired each shade and you can really see the amount of like thought that was put into this palette. So this is my number four palette. Okay, top three. And this was not hard at all. Like honestly, these were like the first three palettes that I picked and everything after that was like, Jesus give me strength. Coming in at number three is the Natasha Denona My Dream palette. This is such a beautiful palette. It is also such a basic palette. <laughs> like, I don't think there's anything special about this palette. I will say that I said it in my first impressions or review video. There's nothing special about this palette, but it's so beautiful. Now, I really do like the packaging for this. I love that we have the like paint splatter and it, it does have like a nice textured feel to it. Even like the writing, like you can, some ASMR for you. <laughs> and then when you open it up, again, not a special palette, but it is a beautiful color story nonetheless. Now it definitely leans pretty mauve. I think that if you have retro and glam and um, bronze, you can create this palette. But if you, want, if you don't have any of those and you just wanted one, I think this is a really great option. What I really appreciate about this palette is that every single shade in here works for me. None of them are ashy. The transition shades actually work as transition shades for my complexion. So I really appreciate that. The multi-chrome that she picks in, in here is not a special multi-chrome. We've seen it time and time again. It's also not the most shifty or sparkly, but it is really nice and soft enough that you can wear it in a professional setting and not feel like you're doing too much. I have worn this to work conference before and I really enjoyed it. I didn't think it was over the top or, or distracting. Um, yeah, I just, I just really like this one. This is one that I think is a good, just sort of everyday palette. It can go a little glam and it's just, it's, it's a solid one, but again, it's, it's hella basic. Like it really is, but it's good. And you know what, Natasha actually, you know, did a good job in including multiple formulas. So we get her cream to powder mattes, we get her regular mattes, we get her metallic shades, and then we also get the multi-chrome in there. And I think that it has enough shine and punch for those who don't like the soft shimmers that she did in like Zendo, but also still wearable enough that like I said, it can be used in more corporate professional settings. Okay, coming in at number two, the Uma Beauty Freedom Palette. I am still mad that y'all let me be out here living my life not knowing that Umi Beauty is out here giving us Pat McGrath quality shadows. This, I don't think I've been excited for shadows like this since Notoriously Morbid, Tammy Tanuka. That's the kind of level of excitement that I have because this is truly Pat McGrath quality at a fraction of the price. The mattes in here are really well, they blend nicely. It's definitely not my favorite matte formula, but they, it works and it's definitely not as good as Pat's, but it's a nice formula. But it's where the shimmers come in. The sparkle, it's so gorgeous. And I will insert a video of me um, that I took with the light hitting it directly so you can really see the shine and the sparkle. It has those fine micro glitters that just light up your eyes and when the light hits it, it's like perfection. Now, the shimmers in here are dual chromes. It's not the strongest dual chrome, I'll say that. It's not like wet or anything like that, but it is nice. It is 
a solid nice dual chrome formula and the reason why it's ranking so high is because like I said I got that excitement that I you know don't really get with a lot of new formulas that I try and I haven't really fed, felt that since like the Tommy Chinooka formula or the Notoriously Mormon formula. So you know this one gave me a little tingle and I was like oh look at Jesus. <laughs> so since then I have purchased four more Omi Beauty palettes that's to tell you. So it is ranking really high because it's such good quality. If you haven't tried the formula I seriously encourage you to try it. And coming in at number one is none other than Miss Pat McGrath. This is the Mothership number 10 Moonlit Seduction. Y'all, I know we wanted color. I know we wanted Pat to do something special with her Mothership 10. And, you know, not everybody was super excited for this, but she put her foot in this palette. Her foot, her arm, her leg, her teeth, her, her, everything she put into this palette. And I think it's so beautiful. This is the epitome of glam. Like, if you wanted glam, this is the palette for you. I think that this is such a beautiful color story. Now, what I think is interesting about this is that she did the special shades in here. We don't have any of that baked formula that she has in some of her earlier palettes. So I don't know if she's getting rid of it. I hope not because I kind of like that one. But, you know, that aside, I think that this is a really beautiful palette. I think that you can do, you know, more grunge, you know, looks. Or you can do something that's a little bit lighter. And what I love about Pat's mattes is that you can always blend out her mattes to get lighter shades. It's just, you know, something that she does that I think is so really, really special. Now, I knew this palette was a winner when I wore this to my cousin's wedding. I was a bridesmaid in her wedding. And I'll insert some footage of me wearing it. And I got so many compliments. So many compliments from people who don't even give a damn about makeup. And they were like, Wow, I love your makeup. Wow, I love your eyeshadow. The photographer for um, for my cousin's wedding, she was like, are you wearing Pat McGrath? Oh, who is at my door? Hold on. Okay, anyways, <laughs> had to get my package real quick. Anyways, so the photographer, she was like, are you wearing Pat McGrath? Like, Pat McGrath shadows does something just special, does something different. Like I get the most compliments when I wear a Pat McGrath palette. Like people recognize, even if they don't know who Pat McGrath is, they stop and they're like, your eyeshadow, what are you wearing? And you know, it happened to me too when I tried it the first time and I went to Ulta to pick up something and it was like, girl, what is on your eyes? And I don't know, this is such a beautiful glam palette that I think it's just, Superb, and I know I have to do a re-ranking of all of my Pat McGrath motherships, but I can tell you that this one is going to be up there because she's giving glam. She is glam. <laughs> Anyways, that's it, guys. Those are my rankings for the last ten eyeshadow palettes that I've tried. I'm already five palettes deep into the next ten, so that rankings video should be coming really soon. Uh, but yeah, before that one comes, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe on your way out. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you think about my rankings. Have you tried any of these palettes? Do you want to try any of these palettes? Do you think, you know, my assessment is fair or not? Totally up to you. Uh, I really want to hear your thoughts down below. As always, I love you guys so very much. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye!